Hi again, everybody. TZ here. Uh, before we get started here, uh, we've got cut off line there for a moment. Uh, we're expecting a few hundred people here, and uh, about half the crew had gotten in there, so we wanted to delay and give our uh, some of the stragglers some time to get in. So we'll. Uh, before I introduce uh, Bobby Godlieb and Tom Godlieb, the CEO and president of Two's company, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, mention that Shindig, which is the application we're using for this town hall meeting, is a very interactive event uh, application. You see this little question mark down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you click on that, you can ask a question if you'd like. And, uh, and that question would uh, be sent to our host and uh, that'll be sent to our host offline and they'll he'll submit it and put it up on the screen so that our guests then can answer can answer your question and uh, we can do that throughout the uh, throughout the event um, what I'd um, so uh, what I'd like to uh, do now is introduce uh, Bobby and Tom Gottlieb, uh, and then we'll get started. Tom, Bobby, take it away. Bobby's just going to join us in a minute. Um, but, um, you know, I just want to take an opportunity to welcome you and thank you all for, for joining us uh, today um, in these really unprecedented times. Um, I think it was Winston Churchill who said, never never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think that the creativity here um, in our industry uh, shown over the last uh, more than a month is incredible. Um, and we have a, we do have an opportunity uh, that's unprecedented. And the opportunity is really to just support each other um, to be successful. And as a leader in the gift and home and fashion industry, at Two's company, we feel our, our mission is clear. Um, and we're hoping that we can inspire a new movement that stays together with all of us uh, for the years to come. And that's the idea of togetherness, um, a vision of kindness, thoughtfulness, uh, sharing amongst our peers uh, for the better good of our industry. Um, so we're we're all so great at bringing uh, joy, smiles, and happiness to our customers. And we just want to inspire everyone to continue to do that in uh, really big ways. And so we're hoping today can, uh, can be the start and, and an opportunity uh, for all of us to do that. We're hoping that um, everyone uh, you know, shares this opportunity and we're hoping that we can do it again next week and beyond. And, or for a place uh, where everyone can share. Um, so just be sure to use that question button or that texting between people button on the bottom. It's a question mark and then a, a thing and you'll see how much fun we can have together uh, here. So uh, Bobby, I'll, uh, I'll uh, send it off to you. Hi. Hello, thank you so much for you know, everyone for uh, joining us. We've learned an awful lot about the coronavirus in the, in the last few weeks. And we've also learned a lot about what's really important to us. Certainly it's our health and our family and the people we love and our friends and our neighbors and our community. And it's also, it's also about our businesses. And how lucky are we that we're part of an industry with so many strong, resilient, creative people who are dedicated to making the world happier and bring joy and, and, and beauty to so many people. So we miss you all. And it's just so good to get together. And we hope that very soon we'll be able to give you real hugs and chocolate chip cookies. But in the meantime, we'd like to really help you stay together even though we're apart. So everyone at Choose Company and Tom and I are really, really privileged and honored to host this first town hall meeting, which we hope will be the first of many to come. Tom? 
Over to you. TZ. Okay. Well, thank you, Bobby, uh, Tom, and um, uh, and now let's get to uh, uh, the real deal here, which is why we're all here and, and introducing our our guests. Uh, first one is uh, Mary Liz Curtin. Uh, she is a speaker, writer, and consultant specializing in retail, and she and her husband own Leon and Lulu, which is a fifteen thousand square foot destination lifestyle store in Clawson, Michigan. Uh, although part of Curtin's retail success uh, depends um, on maintaining a sense of humor, which she carries with her at all times, good economy or bad, she is seriously serious about her business and making it work. And uh, these challenging times are no different. Uh, so uh, Mackenzie, how are you? Uh, Mackenzie will be bringing next. Mary Liz, how are you? I'm great, and I'm delighted to be here with all of you. Okay, and uh, next is Mackenzie. I'm delighted to be anywhere this week. You bet. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're with us. Uh, Mackenzie Farquhar is the owner of Lockwood, which is a micro chain of fashion and lifestyle stores based right here in metropolitan New York. She is not only a successful entrepreneur, but she's also working hard to unite her local community with her site, WeHeartAstoria.com. You should visit. It's very good, very entertaining. She's a wonderful example, like many of our retailers, um, who is someone who can create an engaging experience both in-store and online uh, while giving back to her community. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to begin uh, uh, with both of you, with our guests, is something we've, we've spoken about recently, uh, especially in uh, it's in the news right now. Uh, some of our uh, some of our uh, colleagues in other states, uh, particularly Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, uh, their their states are dropping some of their uh, quarantines and reopening spas, restaurants, and even some gift shops. And and I wanted to just start us off by asking the two of you, um, like how, what are your plans, and how do you think that uh, you'll you'll start reopening uh, your stores when the when the whistle sounds in your areas. Okay, well, I'm in Michigan. Go ahead, Mackenzie. I know, awkward, right? Um, so we're in New York City and we're not opening anytime soon. So I have a lot of time to learn from all of you, all of your best uh, tips and practices. I know we'll probably open like we closed, which is gradual, which is slowly bringing on staff, which is having um, you know maybe extended hours so we can thin out how many people want to come in. Maybe it's having a more robust curbside pickup. I think it's having supplies. I've already ordered enough masks that are fashionable because my new motto is masks are the new headbands. So I want them to be cute and fun and stylish. And I want all the, the people who work for me to have one and feel comfortable being here. And um, I also think that none of us know as Mary Liz and I've already talked about. So we're just going to have to be nimble and figure it out day by day, but you know, have some ideas in place. We feel the same way. We're in Michigan, which is under a pretty serious lockdown. We will be opening slowly and be very, very careful about cleaning and things that, well, we just repolyurethane the entire 15,000 square feet in here. And I can tell you our cleaning wasn't as good as it could have been. I found some dust bunnies that were bigger than my head, but those are gone now. And the place is really going to be ready when our customers come back. We will enforce social distancing, but we're lucky because we have a large store. We will also uh, request that all of our guests wear masks. All of our staff will be wearing masks. I'm back and forth on the gloves. I think that we are going to sanitize rather than glove because I think glove because I think it's safer. And then we're going to take it bit by bit and, and day by day. In the meantime, we've we've worked really hard to communicate with our customers and let them know that we're still alive. So we've had a, a healthy group of videos, which you're welcome to watch at Leon and Lulu TV, which is on the Leon and Lulu website. And it's had a great response because we, we have continued to do uh, on our online sales with curbside pickup or shipping. We try to figure out how we can have a really rotten day at low margins and try to call it good. Tom? Oh, what type of online events turn into sales? We have found that just talking about, about um, I the best thing for sales recently was, I did a whole thing about what I'd like to do 
after we get out of quarantine, which was basically highlighting other businesses and museums and restaurants in the Detroit area. And I wore 16 different outfits in the two or three minute video. And I couldn't have a dresser because there was a quarantine, so I had to button all those buttons myself. I was exhausted. Anyway, um, that had a great response and people were interested in the stuff I was wearing and people were so thrilled to see other places mentioned. But every time we bring up something like a surprise box or a bunch of games and things, people respond because they're looking for something to do and they're looking for ways to think of others. They're thrilled with sending gifts to their their friends and to kids and to, uh, we had some lady who called and said, I got a hundred bucks to spend, send me some fun. So we did. Yeah, and I think for things that used to be events that are now online in our community, we've seen people doing virtual vendor pop-ups where a vendor takes over maybe a small artisan or craftsperson takes over their Instagram or Facebook for the day, does a live or a story and people DM with what they'd like to purchase. I know for us, instead of having um, in-store events, we've been really keen on launching new products. So we try and do one to two new product launches a week, like a social distancing mug, locally made face masks, um, whatever it is that really is the hot item so that we are really top of mind for people and there are things they need right now. A surprise box is something that somebody sends to a friend, not in celebration of a birthday or Easter or anything, just an, I love you, I'm thinking about you, here's some puzzles for the kids, a bottle of vodka for the parents. Okay, we can't, you can't do that, but just something that when the quarantine family or person opens it, it makes them happy and it gives them something to do and something to have fun and lets them know that someone loves them. Yeah, we've yeah. been doing surprise boxes quite a bit too, and we've even thrown in funny sponges, um, kickerland tube squeezers, uh, you know, things that like you might need right now, bees wrap. If you're stuck at home, what would be a delight to get? I agree with you. You can't send the vodka and we get a lot of requests for, can we throw in a bottle of wine? And the answer is no, but I wish. Um, <laughs> we can try and think of like face masks, lotion, soaps, like what are you using right now? Puzzles, little games, decks of cards. Books and journals and pens. Sometimes the sender knows what's in the box. I've had our staff spend hours on the phone with somebody. And what is the two-year-old's favorite color? Questions like that. So, so we do custom boxes. And then some people just let us choose them. And we've got suggested boxes. Same here. And we like to embellish our. So if we know a little something about the person, we'll throw that in. If they say it's our friend's birthday, we always include birthday candles or a little sparkler. Just something that is like that fun little extra that you would like to receive. One of our employees has putting in, been putting in notes about how to use the bubble, the flow pack in science experiments. Whoa. And kids have been thrilled with that. You can put it in water and it puffs. It does all sorts of stuff. Um, our best social platform continues to be uh, con our email mark, direct email marketing. But we get a lot on Facebook and Instagram has been terrific. Yeah, I completely second for us. My customer is 25 to 35 years old. So Instagram stories is king, but we use MailChimp. And um, last week we had an email blast that generated $15,000, which I was uh, very pleased with. So I just encourage all of you who have an email list, send out two, three emails a week. Make it fun content. Maybe it's links to your favorite puzzles or a recipe or something that you can do at home, but you know, make it not just about sales, but also trying to actually connect to your customers. We keep our email blast down to once a week, unless it's a targeted email to a specific group, because we find if we get closer than once a week, we start to get drops. Mm. And we just find the opposite. We have a thing we call Tuesday take. And so our Tuesday email is mostly just um, a, hey, how are you email? And it's a list of links of things we've noticed, um, coloring sheets, DIY stickers, you know, things that aren't salesy, but you know, everyone's customer is different. And so it's interesting that we all have different responses to email. And the open days are different now too. We're tracking those carefully. It's a whole new world out here. All the stuff we thought we knew, not so much anymore. Right. Um, you know, I, I would encourage you, and thank you so much for the questions that are coming up. Uh, they're really good, and they keep uh, and they're really able to maximize the uh, uh, 
the things we're talking about. Um, you came up with so many clever, cool things that you're doing now. Um, I'm wondering, do you think when you fully reopen again, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, that you'll continue to do these things or are these just a means to get you to the opening? We're going to go forward with our bundle boxes. Uh, the, our store's name is Lockwood, so I've always wanted to call them our lock boxes and sort of in the spirit of all of the subscription boxes that are already out there. But now I've seen people know us, they like our brand and they just wanna say how much they wanna spend and trust us. So I think we'll always go forward with like a spa box, a birthday box, um, a cookie. We will too. We also will continue to go forward with our low tech website. We don't have an e-commerce en enabled website. You have to choose it and then call us or email us and tell us what you want. and we verify the inventory and conclude the transaction. We're going to have some form of that going forward. We're not planning to go to do a fully integrated e-commerce site with our existing inventory because it's just too much of a nightmare and too expensive. And we're a little low on money right now. I know that's a shock to all of you, but we're going to figure out how to do e-commerce that we have never done before. We're using UPS and uh, USPS. And we're using something called Pirate Ship, which a twos company um, person shared with me. It's a, um, a way to get discounted USPS shipping. And so we have been able to get our rates down to uh, the point where we feel we can offer free shipping currently on all of our products. Nice. Yeah, so anything that fits in a padded envelope, so a t-shirt or um, greeting cards, a pair of earrings is, is just $2.71 for us to ship. And so I feel very comfortable um, letting my you know customers have that free shipping now. But that is something we've actually thought about moving forward is, you know, online is always low margin, but they want that same experience as being in the store. So maybe that's something that when we open, we always do free shipping. It's just like being at Lockwood, but at home. Yeah, we're working through the logistics of that too and the profitability of it because it's not just the cost of the shipping and finding the box and all the rest of it, but it's how long it takes to put it together. And, you know, it's, it's difficult in general, but I think for the next year or two, we're going to have a lot of people who want, want to try to have that friendly experience they get at Lockwood or Leona Lulu or so many of the stores we're watching without leaving the sterile confines of their own home until they can't stand it anymore. And then they're just going to break out and come running into our stores, screaming with joy at the latest wind up toy. Yes. So the items that are selling best for us right now are really um, twofold. We're doing really, really well with anything beauty or spa. We have a women's clothing store and a few lifestyle stores that have a fashion component. So we're getting a lot of requests for like bath bombs, shower bombs, face masks, lotion, soap. So those are doing exceptionally well for us. And we're doing a lot of cooking. So we sell those mason jars that grow herbs. That's probably our second best seller that we've been pairing with other cooking utensils. Um, people just want some fresh activity to do at home. And then of course, like all the games and, and puzzles and all of those things. We're doing the games and puzzles and a lot of the spa stuff. And it is largely things they can play with at home. And we're selling a surprising number of greeting cards. Mm -hmm which amazed me how many people are shopping online for greeting cards and, and delighted me at the same time. Books and journals are good too. People are journaling their experience. We have a bundle that is a candle, a notebook, pens, and tea, and we're calling it a moment of calm journaling, and that's been selling really well. And for our greeting cards, we've been doing bundles of three and five and just let us pick them for you, and everyone seems to be okay with that so far. And to answer the other question, we post on Instagram daily, at least. Daily. And then if we think of something funny, we throw in another one. Credit card payment, and they just give us the number over the phone is how we're handling payments. And our POS system is e-commerce enabled. We use ShopKeep. And so we are taking the payments um, only online via our POS integration. I miss cash. Could I just mention that? I really miss cash. I don't. You know, the funny thing is one of the things I'm I'm planning on doing when we open is doing a ton of instruction about how Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and Tap to Pay work. 
And I want people just to tap their phones on our, um, we use Clover devices, but you know, a lot of your credit card swipers now do tap to pay. And I don't want to touch your credit card and I don't want to touch your cash. I want my staff to touch as little as possible. So I'm going to do an instruction videos on how that works. That's a good point. I've just been a merchant a long time and <laughs> I know I like those piles of 20s. I don't know the best time of day to send emails now. It's changing and we continue to analyze that we, every time we send one. Um, you have to look at the at the metrics when you when whatever your email program is, track it and see what gets the opens and what gets forward and what gets what links get pushed, but you, you have to track it carefully. What emails um, do you use? I use Constant Contact. We've used them forever, and we I've been very happy with them. That, um, just went to MailChimp, and one of the things I like about MailChimp is that after a campaign is sent, it'll send me a recap, so I don't even have to log back in. It'll just say, here's how many people opened it, and this is what they bought from it, and this is the click-through rate, um, but I agree with you. You have to look at the metrics, otherwise you're, you're spinning your wheels a little bit. And if you don't have a mailing list, that's a really hard thing to advise you on at this time when you're not able to talk to very many people to get them to get on their mailing list. But we are, when anyone checks out of the registers here at Leona Lulu or at our restaurant, Three Cats, we do everything we can to get their their emails because it's our most valuable marketing tool. It's Same. It's been amazing. We don't have a good answer about that, but we're, we are researching it and I'm talking to the people in the clothing business about what we're going to do because we don't know how long a virus is likely to, to, we don't have any good answers on how long anything is likely to last on something that comes back. So we don't know if we're just going to completely say no returns, but we're, we're researching it and that's something that I hope to have some answers on in the next couple of weeks. But and I we think it's something that there isn't a definitive answer yet on what you do after somebody tries it on. Yeah, and we, we have fitting rooms in several of our stores and we've actually talked about um, disabling or blocking them off when we slowly reopen. And we plan on doing a more lenient return policy. Currently our clothing is for store credit only, but we're going to do a 30 day cash back to encourage people just to go home with the item. I don't want them to be putting all their stuff in the fitting room. I just feel like the less touches of product, the better. Um, and we might just take the returns and box them up and just put the returns into our um, annual clearance sales. You know, we don't have a, a heavy return rate to begin with, but I'd just rather be safe. We don't know, and we're, we're gonna continue to look, and I think I've got another couple of weeks to figure it out. We have always had a liberal return policy, 30 days, we say it's 30 days because we'd like you at least to start thinking about it in 30 days, but we break the rule all the time mm -hmm. and we'll give you back whatever, however you paid for whatever it is. Um, I don't know what we should do with things that come back from customers. So it's a whole new, it's a whole new ballpark. Mm -hmm. An ugly one. If you just go to pirateship.com, it is a, sort of like third party application. We just run it on our laptop that connects with USPS to give you better rates. Like we used to use the flat ship boxes just directly through the USPS, um, but we were um, you know, brought into the fold with pirate ship and have discovered the cheaper rates. I will also say um, ship station is a good way to ship that will batch online orders for you to, to make it a little more efficient and will also give you some cost savings. And both of those you can run through a, a desktop or a laptop. Becky. Hi, Becky. <laughs> Hi. Um, Mary Liz, you take that. Um, we opened Leona Lulu in 2006, just so we could get a lot of stuff in here for that nice recession we had in 2008, and that, that really worked well for us. Yeah, we opened and in seven. <laughs> so that's, we go back a ways. I am grateful that we did open them because I was in my 20s when I opened that store, and so to have a store and not know anything and go through a recession, I feel like I at least have one battle 
under my belt. And this will be a bigger battle, but um, I learned a few things during that recession. Well, one of the things that we went into this with, my husband had a store for many years in Birmingham, Michigan, and he really was one of the cheapest retailers that ever existed. And the fact that he has always had such a, in fact, I used to write a column for Giftware News called The Penny Pinching Retailer, all about ways to increase your margins and lower your costs and just watch out for the nickels and dimes that make it impossible for you to have the dollars when you need them. So having run a tight ship and then having that reinforced after that last recession has made us in a, has helped us be in a good position to move this time. So I think as we're all thinking about restarting, every one of us is analyzing, where are we going to save money? How are we going to be tight on all the little things that in the flush years we haven't watched as carefully? So I, I think that that's going to be a really important thing. But we started email marketing as soon as we opened. Uh, we opened with 263 names on our list, which included the PTA, the Neighborhood Association, and my husband's family. And we now have 35,000 clean names on the list. So that's that's what we have always done. That's where most of our money has gone. And for us, we've done a lot of charity related events too, ways that we'd get bring a lot of people in the store. Not a good plan now. Bring them in, have a big party, give a, a percentage to a charity. And so we're rethinking that. Sometimes we cry as we rethink it. Weep. <laughs> Constant contact, and I think MailChimp depend on how many contacts you have. Uh, we, I think that for, we pay an annual, I'm kind of making this up, we pay annually because you get a discount for that. And I think we pay only about three, less than $3,000 a year for our entire database, which we can then slice and dice any, we want, any way we want. So we can email to just ladies who wear a size 14 or only the clothing customers. We can get that kind of information out of our point of sale system and build lists and constant contact that are pretty, pretty pointed. Yeah, and I use MailChimp and our current email bracket is about $90 a month. We have, and it's been so-so. Yeah, I think it depends on how your customers perceive that. But one caveat I would give you right now is if you're a heavy Instagram user, you'll notice when you log into Instagram, it's just live, 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 live. And your voice is going to be sort of drowned out. So we've been shying away from that. Um, if you are a, a steady Instagram user, your customers will see your stories first because they've interacted with you. So I always recommend stories, stories, stories. I think the live is a lot of effort and not a lot of people are watching them right now. That's been our experience with them. Even when we did things, we do a big fashion show twice a year and even in, um, Facebook Live in the fashion show, which is a, a big deal for us, was not a particularly repeatable performance. We do two lives a week right now, but they're outsourced. So uh, we have a staff member who um, does a yoga class every Friday at noon. And people know to turn tune in for that if they'd like to do a yoga flow. And then Sunday nights at seven, we do a tarot reading and people can submit their questions in advance. Well, that's nice. You know, I'm not personally producing those. I outsource them to good customers and to staff members. And so I feel like, What's the harm? But I'm not trying to sell during those two hours. Anything that we can do as retailers, and it's always been the case, that makes our customers happier is wonderful. It pays back eventually. Mm -hmm. Those headbands, we sell a million headbands. of the headbands. Headbands, we're just about to list the headbands online. We've also been doing well with their Hamsa and Evil Eye pouches. Um, we did well with a lot of two's company Easter stuff. So that's in my recent memory, but I know that's past now. Well, there's always great stuff at two's company. Mm -hmm. They have so many SKUs that sometimes without looking at my data, I get a little flustered by that because it's like, you know, I probably have hundreds and hundreds of two's company items in the store right now. And you don't even realize, um, they're there, they're there, they're there. You know, it's amazing. I'll go into a store like an antique store and think, isn't this cute? And I turn over and go, oh, two's company. Okay. It's amazing how often I pick it up in somebody else's store and don't even realize it's there. So I flip it over. Mm -hmm. 
we have a POS system that is a complete dinosaur. It's um, Microsoft RMS. We can run six lanes on it. We own it outright. It is a vintage system, but it works just fine. I don't think there is a best POS system. I think anybody who says they like it has Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> and the thought of trying to switch to a new one is unfathomable. I can tell you, looked into it. if you don't have one and you don't have a lot of money, Vend, Lightspeed, and Shopkeep are the three you should look at. They're all cloud-based. You won't need a lot of equipment. You can run them off of an iPad often. And then after that, it's really customizable POS systems that are you know, integrated just for your enterprise and cost um, more than a few pennies. And you have to be very careful, not just at the initial cost, but what is the ongoing cost? What's it going to cost you every single month for this? And what sneaky little treats do they have that you're going to need to add to it to make it really work that you don't fully understand when you first decide that this one is your choice? And I would say if you're looking for a POS system, for me, the the things I would look out for is like, what is the customer interface? Do they have a customer loyalty program? Can they take gift cards? Are they collecting emails? That should all be seamlessly integrated. And what is the reporting like? Because that's, for me, oh, the only reason I want a POS system is I want to know what's sold when, what's sold with it, um, what time of day does it sell best? So, you know, whatever I can get my hands on that makes me a better buyer, that's what I want to know. And I wouldn't buy another one without talking to three or four retailers who are currently using it and finding out what their problems are and what they like about it. Yeah. But we just keep patching. I've got a son who's kind of a genius at this, so I just keep patching it up. <laughs> I try to email about once a week, a little bit more more frequently at Christmas, a little bit more frequently now. But as I mentioned before, if I if we email too too frequently, you start to get list attrition, which is a problem. However, if you've got a dedicated email to a specific group, like if I tell my clothing customers that we've got a markdown on something, they'll they'll take five of those a day. If it's something that's dedicated to them and something that they're interested in. But yeah. you always, every email you send, you must always think, what does my customer want to hear from me? Not what do I want to say to her? How can I how can I provide something she's going to enjoy or it's going to be useful or it's going to be educational or it's going to be something that she wants because it's about her. It's not about what I'm trying to unload. Although sometimes you can find a happy way to make the two things work together. I think you can always do that. <laughs> um, and we send our emails twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. Instagram, email newsletter, <laughs> all the things are saying. It's really hard though because um, our spring business is so um, tabletop and pretty and entertaining and Easter and Mother's Day and nobody wants that. Um, here in New York City, you know, I'm sure you've heard most people have lost their jobs. And so I have to be very sensitive. I'm not trying to sell you that beautiful cheese board or platter. There, there, there's no sense in marketing the bulk of the spring inventory I'm sitting on and now have to pay for. I'm just trying to think, you know, what is the sort of best case scenario that the, the bulk of my customers would want to hear about right now? And that's a lot of the things we already talked about, like the puzzles and spa and games. And I'm sure that's not we're, the one. We're just pushing the things that we think we have the best chance of selling, not necessarily the things that we need most to unload. We're, we have clothing on sale. All the spring clothes came in and got marked down before they got steamed, which was extremely painful. Yeah. But, you know, people aren't going out, so they're not buying a lot of new stuff. It's a, it's a different world. And we're just happy to get any sales that we possibly can. And we're not, mm -hmm. we're not targeting the stuff we want to sell the way we would in a normal world. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the salespeople, so... I've had to furlough or lay off or whatever kind term you'd like to say the bulk of my staff. So I am normally about 30 people and I went down to three and now we're back to seven because I did receive PPP funding. But I have found that my salespeople feel very invested in Lockwood and the brand. And so they have been willing to, for example, I have a full-time visual merchandiser. She has been doing crafts. So she did an Easter egg dyeing craft. She did an Earth Day craft for us. So she's doing what she does best at her home and providing us content. Um, like I said, we have a staff member who's doing like a yoga flow for us. Um, 
really at this point, we just need ways to connect to customers. And that's the, the best way I've been you, be able, you know, able to utilize my um, salespeople at this time. I think that question might have come from a sales rep. And oh, uh, we, we have had, we've had some very helpful sales reps who have, I know one sales rep, and I think it's a twos rep, is making deliveries for one of his accounts, taking stuff and doing port side drop off. We've had a number of reps who have made intelligent uh, suggestions about things that they've got that we can sell right now, which would, of course, be face masks and bath bombs and all, all that kind of stuff. They're checking to make sure that our accounts are up to date. Because one of the things that we've done is gone through our accounts payable and figured out all the little weird stuff that we haven't been able to deal with. A $30 credit, a $20 invoice that we don't understand, gotten that all cleaned up. And our reps have been very helpful with that, too. So a lot of the little funny stuff is going to be all cleaned up when we get back to work. And our reps who are letting us know what's selling from their lines is also very much appreciated, assuming they have the brains to know whether we're open or not open and really looked into what they think is best for us. So a targeted sale is always appreciated, whether we buy anything or not. And just calling and saying hi from the reps that we're good friends with. Mm. It's always a pleasure to hear from them. Um. Hi again, uh, Mackenzie. You, uh, you, and I, and uh, some of our Northeast Alliance groups were, were uh, discussing some things recently, and a lot of the things you've just been speaking about for the last ten minutes remind me of what you said. That uh, it's important to stress uh, all of the boring things that you're doing now, because those are the things that are going to be a difference maker uh, when you reopen again. Uh, you want to elaborate a little bit on that, and then I have a second question for you. Well, talk about it, the thirty dollar credit, uh, Mary Liz. Yeah, I mean, they're getting a lot of that too. But I really think that now is the time. And Mary Liz and I agree on this. I think we're in lockstep that you have to know your margins. You have to know your payroll costs. You know, this is the time when you, as a retailer, have to really look at all your expenses, know your numbers. Um, it's when we're all going to make it or break it. And so I was saying in our alliance meeting that, you know, I really see my job as like buying the pretty things and curating, but that's done. Like we're not buying anything for a while. So now my job primarily has to be just making sure the numbers are as good as possible. I talked to my CPA and my bookkeeper like too much. I am nervous about those bills and I hope they'll be kind to me. Um, you know, I just think now is the time to, if you're an anxious person like I am, that's how I've been able to channel a little of that anxiety is just know what the problems could be. And the other thing, Tom, uh, uh, we like uh, Winston Churchill. And uh, because of the, you know, it's, there's a lot of, uh, he was a great manager in wartime. So there's, uh, there's, some, there's, uh, uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there. In fact, I'm, I, I, I took the dust off of this one. I don't know if it's reversed here. But it's a, it took the dust off of that one from a while back. But I was I picked it up and um, he, he mentioned something uh, that uh, in World War II he said this is a world this is a war of machinery, and he did a lot of scavenging and, and finding steel wherever he could find it because that that was going to build the machinery that he was whether it was uh, uh, tanks or ammunition or whatever. And I was thinking, trying to think of a metaphor for that. I think that uh, right now, this is going to be about inventory uh, right now. And just wondering what your thoughts are for inventory, how you, uh, inventory is king right now. I mean, it's, it's sell what you have type of thing. So just wondering uh, if you have any thoughts or uh, strategies about uh, how you're going to handle your, your inventory and plan for it in the second half. Well, that's a little something I like to think around about three in the morning, walk <laughs> around, <laughs> stress about it. We are cutting back a lot of our, our fall buying. Um, I'm determined to have a full cart to sell from, which I always believe in. I, you know, No matter what the problem is, we always have a full store. But we're going to be very dependent on manufacturers who can ship as we need it, who can refill us during the fourth quarter should we sell anything. I think we'll have a decent the new kind of decent, which will be down probably 50%. But I think that we'll struggle through the fourth quarter, but we're not going to load up the way we usually do for holiday. We're going to depend on our manufacturers for quick shipping and for efficient shipping. We're not going to have time for a lot of, you know, 13 shipments again against one purchase order mistakes. We really need the people who can 
deliver for us. That said, we are also committed and have been forever to the small manufacturers. So we're planning to continue to support those little guys who don't always really know what they're doing, who are the, you know, the creative, such a big part of the creative genius of our industry. So we're still pushing them. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm, it's going to be a very interesting balance when we do reopen because there are lots of stores who are going to be reopening only to liquidate and close. So there are going to be so many stores from mall stores and, you know, Neiman's is in chapter 11 down to the little guy down the street who are going to have, oh, sorry, going to have everything at 50% off, 75% off. And I'm not going to play that game. We'll have stuff on sale for sure. Lots of it, but not, we're not going to do the whole store. We're not going to turn into a discount store when we reopen because that's not us. And I think we all have to watch for that carefully. Yeah. And we have five locations and I don't plan on opening all five of them right away and maybe not all five of them for the rest of the year. I have one location that is blocks away from, I think, the hardest hit hospital in New York City. And I was there yesterday and it was pretty sad. And my staff would have to take public transportation to get there. And I just can't see how that store will open. So I'm going to treat that store sort of like my warehouse for the time being. Um, and I echo everything you said. Plus, I'm going to start buying with the internet in mind. So instead of, you know, we are a Christmas ornament store. We sell a ton of Christmas ornaments and we're really known for our big Christmas displays. And, and instead of having, you know, maybe 200 different ornaments on one tree, we're going to order 60 ornaments, but a big uh, depth of them so that we can ship them out online and really look at our best um, past best sellers and, and lean on that. I'm expecting some supply constraints as well. Our two main upholstery, we sell custom upholstery and our two upholstery vendors are both making masks and gowns now. So when we reopen as a furniture store, I expect my invent, my furniture inventory to be hit heavily with the stuff that's in stock and I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to replenish that. Fortunately, I've got a lot of stuff in stock in a warehouse that is overstocked. I think we're just going to have to be creative and make our displays better than ever and sort of fake it till you make it. And we're going to have to watch all of it every single day because it's it's all changing. And I think when we reopen, it's going to change week to week. I don't think the first week is necessarily going to be what it's like the fourth week and the fifth week as people become more accustomed to the the work that it is to to go out and the you know wearing masks. But masks, you know, it's a fashion accessory. There's no way around it. I can't bear to wear something that doesn't. I've worn matching scarves this whole time. I don't know why people think that's foolish. So that gives us a new a new area of something to make people a little bit happy. And I figure the masks are the new reading glasses. I'll have 55 pairs of them, just like I do readers. Yeah, I would encourage people who are looking for things to sell now, I'm getting a several emails a day from vendors who are doing masks, or maybe you have a proficient seamstress in your neighborhood, um, start selling masks. We have sold a lot. And, and we're getting calls from our customers yeah. saying, I know you're gonna have the cutest ones. What have you got in masks? Because I yeah. really don't wanna wear that. And kids masks, I hate to say it, that's the most depressing thing, but we ordered a lot of kids masks, really cute ones that are like little animals. It'll be a, a fascinating year. <laughs> I can tell you how sophisticated my online setup is. Not. Um, ours is, um, I don't know how to answer that question. It's pretty sophisticated. Um, we use big commerce. I think Shopify is the gold standard. And I, I've heard nothing but good things about Shopify because you can more efficiently print labels from Shopify than we can in big commerce. Um, I don't dig the eBay, Amazon channels at all. I think that for me, the way I like to think of Lockwood is sort of um, a more curated experience. I think Amazon and eBay, they give me a little bit of pause. Well, they're a race to the bottom. Yeah. It's That's fun. what we sell in our stores, both Lockwood and Liana Lulu, is we sell an experience and we sell a relationship and we sell happiness. We're not selling something that's $2 cheaper than somebody down the street. You can probably find most of our stuff a little bit cheaper if you really work on it I and know. knock yourself out. 
What? My margins are New York City margins. So you can find everything I sell for less somewhere else. But that's not, again, what I'm selling. Um, exactly. And books. We sell tons of books. You could stand at my book wall, scan it, order it on Amazon for 30% off. I wouldn't even know it. And we still sell tons of books. Yeah. Um, Facebook Marketplace has been really good to us. And we do a, a substantial amount of sales through both um Instagram and Facebook, and you'll need an e-commerce website, and then you can integrate it with the Facebook um, backend. And I would definitely say it might be a good time to consult a millennial. Um, I do. I own one. Yeah, mine is a baby still, so I have to pay them. <laughs> We're planning more gift boxes and surprise boxes, um, and just more of the same it'll be you know easter without the ears yeah and we added a functionality to our website that you can add a mother's day card my staff is handwriting messages we will make you a custom mother's day box we have 12 listed with plans to add 12 more um people are really responding to the boxes and bundles so i would encourage all of you to look at your inventory and see what you can make that's somewhat consistent and start marketing it today yeah, it's been great for us. And it's it has helped with some of our stock balancing too, shall I say. Yes, because you can throw in a slower seller. Some little treasures have ended up in those boxes. Yes, <laughs> echo. <laughs> I expect it to be the same way it always has been. I don't want anything made in China. I'm only going to buy things made in America. Oh my God, that's three times as much. And they throw down the flag and run across it and buy the stuff from China. So I think that we'll have the same. Everybody is going to perceive that they want only made in America. We will continue to try to buy made in America as much as possible, but eventually pricing. I mean, we certainly couldn't do made in America Christmas ornaments. No. And I think the real thing I think about when I think of China is like, what will the product flow be like? Um, that's, that's a huge question. Short, sweet, and friendly. That would be my advice. And targeted. It's got to say something. They don't want to say hello, you know, hello from Liana Lulu. It's it's got to have a call. To, it's something that makes them want to open it. So those keywords like sale or gift box or surprise or something that's got to new exclusive um i also we always sign ours with an emoji which it might not be for your customer but that um looks different especially on uh digital platforms right like if you're on your phone uh, an email that ends with a heart we have a new mother's day boxes heart um you see that before you see the sea of just plain text dollar or dimension or <laughs> my boxes or whatever I can find. They include boxes from, I sent a lovely Easter package to my sister in a box that held black gloves. It's really festive. We get a lot of our boxes from the, the uh, restaurant next door. So you might get a box that used to hold fish. It smells okay. It's all right. So we're using almost entirely recycled boxes and then USPS boxes. Um, and we have three standard sizes from Uline so that we knew in advance how much it would cost us to ship that box. And we work backwards with, you know, what the cost of shipping, what the cost of the box, what went inside the bundles and boxes so that we make sure we make, you know, like three dollars. <laughs> We're really careful to get any um, discount programs, free freight. Dating isn't as important to me as a discount, as a anything that will just make those margins a little bit better. And we are not, we aren't afraid of, afraid of a price point. We'll add fifty cents or a dollar, or whatever. Pretty much, if it's less than twenty bucks, they don't even think about it. So we, we're just careful. And on anything that is blind, we're always looking for something that nobody can identify that we can get a little extra margin on. And anything that is a hot ticket, we shop around and find out who's got the best deal on it. Also, we happen to be in a location that previous to the coronavirus had a bag ban, which delighted me. So 
um, technically I have to charge you five cents if I give you a bag now. And so we did a run of custom made Lockwood bags that we gave out to our customers, um, encouraging them not to use tissue paper, gift wrap, those little gold loops you close a jewelry box with bags, like that all adds up. So that would be my number one thing to look at is look at your supply roster. What are you handing to a customer? Even a simple friendly question, would you like a bag? That will make people think and often they'll say no. Um, I know with coronavirus, it'll be different and I'm not sure if we want customers bringing in their own bag, but you know, you can look at literally everything. How do you buy your cleaning supplies, your toilet tissue? You know, are you buying in bulk? Could you save money there? Um, it all adds up. I worked with the, I knew about a neighborhood association years ago who had rented a warehouse and they bought stuff like toilet paper and bags and tissue in bulk and then sold it to the people in their neighborhood association because they could buy such enormous quantities as a co-op. I'd do that. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I'm not going to, but I would. <laughs> <laughs> we do everything in a brown Liana Lulu tote with tissue and a piece of ribbon. But I'm cracking down on the tissue now because they're getting out of control on that. We have a stationary store and so we gift wrap and the consumer buys the sheet of gift wrap and then um, we give them the um, ribbon and the labor. So we're at least making money on the sheet of wrap. But I love like a foil stamped box. That's like a gift box and here you go. Cause I think the, the real big thing for me in 2020 is like labor is expensive and, and that's the biggest number I'm gonna be looking at. And gift wrap is like my number one with the bullet takes a long time. And what I really um, dislike is here's a really big odd shaped thing, but you say you gift wrap. So, you know. The bags have been a great answer for us. Yeah, it's just like a nice box and you put in a bunch of surprises that you think are indicative of your store that your average customer will like and you call that a surprise box. It's like a Christmas stocking or an Easter basket except it's in a box. That's right. Often includes some candy and some. Yeah, we had a ton of caramels that we bought for Easter that are expiring. And so everyone <laughs> is getting caramels. I'm opening the bags and I'm throwing them. And if you buy a $100 surprise box, you get a full thing of caramels. Surprise. You're, you're so generous. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> um, we use the Uline Indestructo mailers. They're brown and we've gotten three sizes, but we ordered them specifically to fit certain merchandise. So like I mentioned, we like to sell those mason jar herb kits. So we were like, what box fits one of those that's been bubble wrapped? And then we ordered one that we knew would fit um, cookbooks, which we're selling. I would say, you know, Look at your inventory, go on Uline, get out the tape measure. And we got um, padded bubble mailers for things like t-shirts, baby onesies, greeting cards, because those are really inexpensive to mail. And we ordered quite a few Lockwood labels and every box or bubble mailer gets a sticker and a handwritten thank you card goes in every single box. So you'll need supplies. We did the same thing for a couple of things that we ship often with the right size Uline boxes, but it's really driven by what you put in it. And mm -hmm. sometimes what you sell online, especially in a surprise pot box, is driven by how heavy it is or how hard it is to ship. There's some things we just don't even suggest because they're a pain. And I can't tell you how many times, you know, maybe we have like a, a nine by six by four box and I've pulled a few things that they don't fit in the box. Well, surprise, they're getting something else that fits in the box. <laughs> Yes. Um, so we're doing a VIP discount card. Um, this is where Mary Liz and I might disagree. So we did a buy a gift card, $50 or more, and we hand write a thank you card with a VIP discount card. That's like a little credit card that we had um, printed with a local printer for over four.com. And that card entitles you to 10% off any Lockwood purchase in person for 2020. And we've been getting tons of positive feedback online. They didn't expect the thank you card. They didn't know they'd be a Lockwood VIP. And so that's me telling them, 
spend that gift card in store when we reopen and we'll incentivize you with a small discount. I think it's a great idea. I haven't done it though. We're yeah. so, we, we get, send a birthday, um, what is it called? It's our, one of the dogs in our store is named Spot. So we tend to send a 10 spot to everybody as a birthday gift, which is $10, no strings attached, doesn't expire. You can use it on anything. We do occasionally do discounts that we promote through our email list. And we might send something to the people who have purchased things online because I think we've got them. I'm pretty sure we've got them as a separate database or as a targeted database in our system. But we haven't done it yet. And I'm just we have there are so many discounts going on. and in the furniture business, we have to be a little careful that we don't have a floor sample discount and another 10% and something else because we don't want to turn into one of those no, no, no retailers. Mm -hmm. So with the number of different kinds of retail, we have a restaurant, we can sell wine to go, we have um, for women's clothing, we have custom furniture. It's got it, whatever we do has to translate on all those different platforms. And so it becomes sticky to, to do it. And as far as I get you an idea and I want one. Um, in store sales, we also partnered with a local printer and did um, neighborhood t shirts. So they say Queen Strong on this round, and we're donating a percentage to local nonprofits that are on the ground here. Um, but they're in store pickup. <laughs> so when I'm able to reopen, that's how I plan on using a lot of my labor dollars is um, triaging all those t shirts and having them in charming packaging. So people have to come in and say hi to us in a safe way. I think that's great. We're keeping the testers that are squirt testers. Any of the testers that you have to put your finger in have been removed. And then we are suggesting you smell the soap and assume that the lotion is going to smell like the soap should there or the candle mm -hmm. or something else that's non-invasive to test. And, and again, as far as food, just trust me, it's really good. Yeah, and the, the return policy. I think that um, I like to talk about gratitude and abundance. And so I'm going to make that return as kind to my customers as possible. So if I don't have testers or now is not the time to be losing customers. So, you know, if they want to take that lotion home and use it and they don't like it, I guess bring it back and I'll delight you. We could talk mean about them after they leave, but we're always really nice when they come in. Okay. We've, it's, it's really interesting when you have a generous return policy, how often you'll get a customer who comes in ready for battle and they're like pissed and they're going to fight with you about this. And you say yes, and they don't know what to do. And then they still, well, oh, and they're like, it's fun to watch because so many places are not gracious about it that when you are, it's, that's just a little sideshow that we like every once in a while. <laughs> Angry customer with nowhere to vent it because she has nothing to be mad about. Yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do a graduation boxes. We're going to pivot the second we're done fulfilling Mother's Day boxes. So you'll have a drop down. You can add a graduation card. We're going to put all those graduation gifts that, you know, started to roll in just as we had mandated stay at home. But I would encourage you, I think that's another great time to do a box. And just put it, you know, just say, tell us about the customer and we'll customize it for you. Or maybe you do monogramming and you have a killer monogram program right now. I mean, I think graduation is one not to miss for sure. I think anything that even smells like an occasion is one not to miss right now. <laughs> the Fourth of July box, that steel day box, that's going to be big. Huge. <laughs> when is that? We have pickups. They won't come to us at this time. So we mask up, glove up. Um, we have made a deal with USPS. They meet us outside with a cart. So it's all done outside. They wear a mask. We wear a mask. It's not ideal. Sure. But it's We've got clothing on sale. The only clothing that's done done on sale was our former biggest line, which we lost this year because they went they closed. Comfy, we did tons of business with them. It was our first or second, I think it was our second biggest vendor in the entire business. They went down, so I bought a lot of it and had a had had a huge sale in January at full price because we had the goods that people wanted. Then we discounted it. Now I can sell that because people know what it is. They know what sizes they wear. They, it's really easy to, for them to buy that online. But with our more interesting things, our European imports and our stuff that's, you know, not 
something you know, it's hard to say, buy this shirt that you've never heard the company and had no idea how it fits online when you have no place to go or reason to wear it. It's not a compelling package. So we're, we're going to have to have a really horrible, painful clothing sale as soon as we reopen. And I may do it outdoors. Mm. I may have a lot of stuff. I may block off the patio at the, the restaurant and have an outdoor sale. I have I, one staff member who's only listing clothing that is coming right out of the vendor box that's still in the plastic that never got steamed or entered. And we're just putting it directly online at 40% off and it is selling. So we're selling I, some of it, but it's not selling as fast as I'd like it to. No, but I, every sale to me is a victory. Any bit of money I can get back right now, I'd rather have the cash than the, you know, like I sold a leopard bodysuit. No one needs a leopard bodysuit right now. So I don't know why that woman. You know, that might be something that's better staying at home. But I'll take it. I'll take her money for that. But I would say, you know, your inventory best. And so if like you have the margin to do a sale or you have a big amount of stuff you want to move, then why not do a sale? You know, it's true. So the thing about monogramming or customization is I find it's about the labor and not about the price point of the product. Um, to that end, we have gone down to simply um, doing embossing and blind embossing because that's the, the amount of labor I'm willing to spend. But you might have a customer who really wants monograms and so you have brought in other products, but for us, a $15 notebook that gets a beautiful monogram or um, small personalization is where I draw the line. Do you customize? No, I've looked into it a couple of times, but it's labor intensive. I have to find a place to do it. I, it's a whole big thing and it, it didn't seem like a thing that was going to pay off well enough to make me want to keep going on it. Yeah. Everything I know about personalization is it's a big buy-in. It's a big, you either need a laser engraver, a hot stamper. Something. And then you need somebody to sell it. And then you need somebody to do it. And then you need to make sure that the person sells it right and the person does it right because there's no marking down a bad monogram thing. Oh, no, they will make mistakes. And then you will have a lot of notebooks laying around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> That's very sweet. Thank you for the thank you. I can give you mine now. It's hello at lockwoodshop.com. Mine is ml at leonandlulu.com. All spelled out. And there she have it. <laughs> All right, you guys were unbelievable. Thank you so much for doing this. This is, uh, this is wonderful. I'd like to ask the last question of the day uh, before we wrap this up. And... Um, I don't think you mentioned this, uh, uh, Mackenzie. I apologize if you did, uh, but you talked about your tote. Uh, but you shared once, one other time that you that you that you give out the tote at different times of the year, and then you run a program for holidays or at the end of the year, and it's it's uh, fill up the bag for ten dollars or fill up the bag for twenty dollars. Not that. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so you want the tote rundown? Yeah. Make the totes in China. We purchased about 6,000 last year. We um, gave them out for Small Business Saturday, which is a big deal here in New York City. The tote is good for 10% off anything that fits in the tote year round. So it is a hot item. You can only get it that day. We put a scarcity mentality around it. That being said, I use it as my push pull. So if I have a day, let's just say, pretend we were open right now and I it's, it's shitty weather here in New York, but I need to make those Mother's Day numbers. I would say, hey, if you have a VIP tote bag, it's good for 20% off anything that fits in the bag today only. So I um, have seen great success with that. We did an hour, a 10 to 11 a.m. where I was like, hey, come get all your stocking stuffers, 20% off. And we had lines at all five stores for people waiting to come and get that. So I... I think, you know, you can find your own ways of doing things like that. Okay, this was great. Uh, Mary Liz, Mackenzie, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure everybody uh, learned a lot. I know I did. Um, 
Uh, and to our, all the uh, the people in our audience, thank you so much for participate, participating. We loved hosting this event, and we certainly look forward to the next one. And, and we'd like to hear from you. Uh, uh, Mackenzie and uh, Mary Liz gave you their email addresses. I'll give you mine. My name is Tom Zimmerman, so it's tzimmerman at twoscompany.com. We'd love to, for you to share your comments on how we might improve, uh, be tough to do, uh, as well as the subjects that we couldn't get to today uh, that you'd like to hear. Uh, in the meantime, thanks so, so much for sharing. Uh, thanks for participating and uh, be safe. Thanks for having us, Tom. You bet. Bye-bye.